Today is the day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan, here in the Stamford Bridge studio. And that's right, happy deadline day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The most exciting day of all the transfer window when loads of frantic stuff happens and often, especially if you're Chelsea Football Club, you get a lot of deals done. Already, this has been an incredible January uh, transfer window for Chelsea. I guess the best, purely because we've signed eight players and some are excellent. And we mugged off Arsenal in the process. The warm fuzzies, you can't ask for more. Or can you? A couple of exits might happen. Chelsea is still, of course, trying to negotiate the Enzo Fernandez deal, which will break the English transfer record, which is currently held by Jack Grealish, shortly followed by one Romelu Lukaku. And there's a, yeah, there could be, there's four massive stories I want to talk about today. One, two, three, four. I'll be citing The Athletic to talk about said stories. So great source, reputable source. And uh, just huge stories. It's really exciting. I am going to not only upload this video in this uh, G January the 31st morning, um, I will upload in the latter stages of the day to give you updates. So, what you have to do is subscribe and hit the bell and notifications icon to ensure you're updated, because I like to react first if I can and offer you the information. So thank you for liking the video, thank you for subscribing, and let's get into it. Okay, so the four stories we're talking about today. First off, you've got Enzo Fernandez, the blockbuster story. We'll give you updates on that. Conor Gallagher is in high demand, and many Premier League clubs are coming in for him. Chelsea have put a 40 plus 5 million pound transfer fee on him. He's already rejected Everton, but Newcastle are coming in for him as well. And a couple of big explosive stories that broke last night. One is Jorginho to Arsenal, who, by the way, or by the way, this has been a story before, Mikel Arteta has gone for Jorginho before. He likes him. Uh, Jorginho, of course, has six months left on his deal. He's expected to leave in the summer on a free, though Chelsea could milk actually quite a lot of cash from Arsenal for a player with six months left on his deal, who, let's be honest, are probably just going to win the title anyway. And another one that was really interesting, which I think we'll start with, is Hakim Ziyech to PSG. Look, man, I if you you if you watch my channel and you watch my content, you will know that I have a great deal of respect for the Moroccan magician Hakim Ziyech. I like his swagger. I like his arrogance. I think it's important. And I know it's such a boring thing to say, but he really has a wonder with a left boot. It's so annoying when people say that. And why can you only have a wonder with a left boot? No one says a wonder with a right boot, do they? It's just if you're left footed, you're allowed to be a foot magician. Weird. Anyway, let's jump in. Like I said, we're citing information from um, The Athletic. So Adam Craft and David Ornstein wrote the segment on Hakim Ziyech saying this. Paris Saint-Germain are in talks to sign Chelsea winger Hakim Ziyech, Hakim Ziyech on an initial loan, which is peculiar. Especially because he's 29. Ziyech, 29, could depart Stamford Bridge before Tuesday's transfer deadline due to the January arrivals of fellow forwards Jao Felix, Noni Madueke and Mikhailo Mudrik. But Ziyech has been starting. I guess also you have to consider Pulisic, Sterling been out injured. They will eventually return. The Moroccan, who is uh, who has had contracts with Chelsea since 2020, oh until 2025, has made just 10 Premier League appearances so far this season, with only four of those coming from the start. PSG are one of the three Champions League sides. One, two, three, keeping an eye on Ziyech during the next 24 uh, four hours. And again. Doesn't surprise me. Ziyech is very talented. He's yet to turn 30. He's won the Champions League at playing a role. He was Ajax's player of the year three or four years in a row. And um, he's clearly got that swagger. And you put him in another league, he'll, he'll be like one of the best players in the league. I, I, you know, had things been different at Chelsea and we wanted to play differently, it could have even worked for him at Chelsea more. He's, he's great, man. So the French champions are discussing terms on a loan, which would include the option to buy Ziyech. Ziyech was part of the Morocco side, which made history in December by becoming the first African side to reach the World Cup semi-finals. Great World Cup. Works very hard. Some people were frustrated because <laughs> they saw him work harder for, uh, for Morocco than they had for Chelsea, which is 
partly true. He has had some games where he dug in. The former Ajax attacker recorded one goal and one assist out in Qatar before returning to his club. But Chelsea may look to trim their first team within the next 24 hours after completing the seventh deal of this month. Uh, I thought it was the eighth, or was uh, Enzo will be the eighth, maybe. I think. Right. We need to trim the squad. He's a senior player. He's probably on a lot of money. Um, he'd be happy. I want to see Hakim Ziyech happy. I know it's a bit lame to say. I just want to see the players happy. But, like, Chelsea's the priority. But when a player like that isn't a priority in the system, let them go be happy, you know? He's a great player. He'd probably tear up in Liga and playing for PSG, feeding Kylian and Bappe on the left flank from a deeper right position with that wonderful left boot of his. It would probably work really, really well. So, you know, and, and another thing I saw today was quotes cited on Twitter um, talking about um, uh, Jao Felix and how he'd actually very happy at Chelsea. And should Chelsea want to sign Jao Felix on a permanent transfer, um, they would be able to do it. So Fabrizio Romano is quoted saying this, if Chelsea wants to keep Felix, then no problem with the agreement with Atleti. He absolutely, he absolutely loves it at Chelsea. He likes the atmosphere and the team. Dude's been playing terrible for so long for Diego Simeone. He's got a chance to be with a, a fun, lighthearted team that, you know, wants to keep the ball and have a good time. You know, great project. He, he you know, it's if Chelsea want to sign Jao Felix, it sounds like they can. Which will excite many, many people, including myself, even though we've only seen him play, what, 60 minutes of football at Chelsea shirt. So, let's keep our powder dry, let's hold our horses, wait out the season, but get more and more excited with Jao Felix if he puts in good performance, knowing, odds are, we can sign him on a permi. Right, Ziyech down. Next up, let's talk about Conor Gallagher before we talk about Jorginho and of course Enzo Fernandez. So, Conor Gallagher, why Chelsea's midfielder, is in demand on transfer deadline day. Mm -mm -mm. A scramble to secure Chelsea's midfielder's services before 11pm deadline is underway with interest from, what the heck, Newcastle United, ching ching, Aston Villa, ooh, Unai Emery's men, Everton, sinking ship apparently it does not appeal to Conor Gallagher he does not want to go to Everton and although Everton are a big club you can understand that I mean you can they might get relegated and they're going to be playing Sean Dyche ball so you'll forgive him for that West Ham United similar but yeah and Crystal Palace of course where he was on loan last season though the players last time he played against Palace the uh was it the away fans or the home fans I can't remember was that the bridge I think so the away fans were giving him loads and loads of grief I'm not gonna read all this article but it goes into detail why Conor Gallagher is a good player energy tenacity he's box-to-box -box midfielder primarily number eight just loads of teams like him he's got goal scoring contributions apparently his attitude is unmatched um here the article says so he's a top boy and everyone loves him now the the initial reaction to this on social media when they saw 40 million plus 5 million pounds for Conor Gallagher was like oh my god yes sell him and that was a little bit bad because he could be very very good and by the way Conor Gallagher throughout the uh, youth ranks was recognized as an incredible player. Some players, some people said he's better than Mason Mount. Uh, Mason Mount has proven to be very, very useful and, you know, tactically versatile and has won the Champions League with Chelsea as an integral player. So it's a different story now. I kind of would be a bit sad to see Conor Gallagher go. Like, if we do end up playing maybe like a 4-3-3, uh, even like a 4-2-3-1, you play him next to, you know, I know a double pivot of Enzo Fernandez and Conor Gallagher would be very attacking. <laughs> but, you know, if we play with eight... And if he can play like a rotational substitute role, I think he'd be very, very useful. But I do think he's worth. I do think he's worth forty million because he he'll he'll be this immediate starter for a Premier League team, and he and he'll bring energy and work rate and everything. And I just I just think you know he's an England international. He's twenty two years old. He's already played for West Brom, uh, Swansea, Crystal Palace, Charlton Athletic. Um, you know, Chelsea, and he's, he's only like 22. He's had loads of experience um, in the Premier League clubs and Championship clubs, and he, of course, has played for England already. So, <clears throat> loads of potential. I think he is probably worth that, despite what people say. Uh, although I'll be sad to see him go, you've got to break a few eggs. 
Right, to speaking about Mason Man, I'm gonna go, let's go to the other side of the culture war and speak about a, another Champions League winner. And uh, just a straight up great guy, Jorginho, a specialist player that divides opinion, that has an excellent and interesting story at Chelsea. Came to Chelsea, uh, fans didn't like him, they, they sort of saw him as the, the representative of Sari, which they weren't happy with, and he became Sari's son. But in the same season, that same debut season, he played really well, scored goals, and the fans at Stamford Bridge sung his name, Jorginho. It was a lovely story, and he's a great player. He's and he's a great guy. Like everyone loves Jorginho. He's always upbeat. He's friendly. He's welcoming, and he's just like a positive guy. And he tries hard for the team. And what he's good at, being a sort of metronomic register, you know, player that looks after the ball and keeps things well. If you play a certain way, he's genuinely the best at what he does. That being said, I'm not sure Chelsea moving forward and their project is conducive to keeping Jorginho in this style. He is, of course, the vice captain. Um, he's 31, going on 32, and his you know, I don't think it would necessarily make sense to renew him. I would like it that his story just ended with a, you know, a big thank you to Chelsea, kiss the Champions League trophy and go to Italy. But Chelsea apparently have an opportunity to sell him to Arsenal Football Club for money. For money. Let's read what David Ornstein is saying. Arsenal are, in advanced, uh, are advancing towards an agreement for Jorginho. And that is now their most likely recruit, with an acceptance that Brighton's resistance to selling Moises Caicedo means the deal, <laughs> excuse me, will not materialise. David Ornstein saying Caicedo to Brighton is off, and they're looking to sign Jorginho. The Athletic reported last night that Arsenal were exploring a possible move for the Italy international. The Premier League leaders are very light on cover for their first choice holding midfielder Thomas Partey, with uh, El Nenny absent for the injury. And then he's not very good anyway. Mikel Arteta is thought to be the driving force behind the North London side for Jorginho. He's wanted Jorginho before. Excuse me. And before that, before Jorginho came to Chelsea, Pep Guardiola wanted Jorginho at Man City. And guess who was the assistant manager at the time? Drum roll, please. Mikel Arteta. Arsenal have chased Brighton's Caicedo um, throughout the window, but the South Coast London club... Um, London? No, not London, Brighton. Although Chelsea, if it's like the new London, Brighton. Basically, Brighton won't sell Caicedo. So they've now turned to Jorginho, whose contract at Stamford Bridge expires in the summer. This means Chelsea are at risk of losing him for nothing. So they are at risk. It's Chelsea's decision not to renew him. So it's not that they're not risking anything. They've made the decision to lose him for free. You know... Chelsea are trying to push through a uh, deal for Enzo Fernandez. We're going to talk about that in just a moment, which could push Jorginho further down the pecking order. Any move for Arsenal would make Georgi would uh, make for Jorginho may depend on the success of Chelsea's efforts to secure Fernandez. Jorginho would provide significant experience as they try and win the title this campaign. So Jorginho has won the Champions League, the Europa League, and the Euros. If he goes to Arsenal, let's be real. He will win the Premier League with Arsenal in a six-month campaign. We'll get a medal. What an illustrious trophy cabinet Jorginho would have. Look, man, Arsenal are going to win the title. I think. I think he will. They will. So, might as well give a medal to Jorginho. Can't have one, mate. They're going to win it anyway. And, you know, they're saying Chelsea could make £15 million for a guy in his 30s. Like a, a, a CDM in his 30s with six months left on his deal. And we're trying to juggle financial fair play i'll be very interested in what you guys have to say about that so make sure you comment down below about Jorginho to arsenal huge and of course there's enzo fernandez chelsea are <laughs> desperately trying to secure this deal get this deal done we've sent the whole crew over to um to uh, portugal to get this done um with there's advancing talks no no breakthrough as of last night the price is there. Graham Bailey says this. The price for the deal is there for Enzo Fernandez. It's just the size of the instalments that Rio Co Rio Co Rui Costa is wanted adjusting. Rui Costa won't green light the deal until he is happy. Chelsea are confident they're getting their January target. Essentially, we're happy to pay, what, 120 million euros for Enzo Fernandez. They want 120 million euros for Enzo Fernandez. The issue for us is, if we trigger a clause, financial fair play recognises that as 
you've just spent 120 million euros. Whereas if we say, look, we will pay it, but let us structure the payments, suddenly it becomes feasible to navigate financial fair play. And this is where the initial story of we'll pay more than the release clause so we can structure the payment. I'm not sure we're actually going to do that, but that's Chelsea, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to structure the payment. Enzo is happy to continue the season at Benfica, but he does want the move. Personal terms are agreed to Chelsea. If you said to Enzo, do you want to go in the summer or do you want to go to Chelsea Football Club now in January? He'd go, now please, and he'd hop off onto a plane, come to Stamford Bridge. It's just Rui Costa and Chelsea, but they've been there all night. They're trying to secure and navigate the deal. And of course, we will update you as this blockbuster day continues. Ladies and gentlemen, it's popping off. Things changed very quickly, so subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll keep you posted throughout the day. I really do appreciate all your interactions, so thank you for liking the video. There's the little graphic down there. Um, yes, thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys very soon, probably in the afternoon, late afternoon, for updates. Keep it locked. Peace.